It's Sunday night, 9 o'clock. Welcome to All Across Live. I'm Gary Groove in Toronto, and with me, as always, my cast, I have Sean Slat over in Moose Jaw. Sean, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks, Gary. And I have Muffler Mike over in Connecticut. Mike, how are you? I'm doing great. It is a spectacular week. My God, another busy week in everything. <laughs> uh, weird stuff, though, man. Weird stuff. I've been watching the soccerization of the cross. You know, the toughest guys I knew were guys that wrestled and guys that played lacrosse with. And now I'm watching guys when the guys are coming within three feet of them, dropping like they were shot. I just hope that changes soon because, you know, as long as the uh, the refs are calling it, they're doing it, right? Yeah. Nobody's, nobody's that foolish. So, anyways, before we get moving, of course, we want to, of course, get the ball rolling. And so, here we are. Just to get the ball rolling, y'all. <laughs> I love that. That happens every rock game, man. They have the uh, official uh, delivery of the first ball, so that's uh, it's perfect. So I think I'll incorporate that. I like that. <laughs> Anyways, before we get rolling, remember that episodes are streamed live across Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and also Twitch, and you can catch all the action on EOPSports.com. Remember, hit the subscribe, follow, and like buttons. Always share. Uh, as you see, we have plenty of shows. Please have a look at them, and please you know, follow them as well. Lots of great shows, all types of shows for all types of sports. If you missed a show, no worries. You can grab all the podcasts and all the major podcasting companies, which include Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, and so much more. You can also catch all the shows on the EOP YouTube page at EOP Sports. Or you can catch all of our stuff on the All Across All the Time YouTube page in which you can catch much, much more. Our library as well as a library of retro games, interviews, um, reviews, as well as fights and a few other things in there as well. More coming all the time. Remember, you can stay up to date with all sports by visiting EOPSports.com with great articles from our huge staff of contributors. And while you're there, please subscribe to our newsletter couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, we have the Bats Invitational in two weeks' time over in Rochester at the Blue Cross Arena. Doors open at 12.30. Face-off is at 1. It is the Laxney uh, North American Invitational Champions against the Rochester Bats this year in the third annual. Take a look at the Rochester Bats Instagram page for more ticket information. Your ticket for the Nighthawks game at night gets you in free for this game. It's a double whammy. I suggest you do it. If you're anywhere near the Rochester area. I've been going to these things for a while, and they're great. They're great games. Next thing to remember also is in July is the third annual uh, McDougal Memorial, Memorial um, helping kids reach their full potential. A uh, great day of lacrosse. You have a junior A game at 3 p.m., the celebrity game, which is a must-see at 6 p.m., silent auction, which goes 4 to 10. Lots of great stuff every year. I got some great things last year. Beer garden and live music, all of it's fantastic. It costs next to nothing to go. I think it's ten bucks. If you're in anywhere near the Oakville area near track, please head on down. Um, really for a good cause and a lot of fun, and see all your buddies and friends from the world across. Well, guys, a few things in the news before we get rolling into a, a big week of uh, NLL as we get a little bit clearer through the mud. Oh, well, this playoff is going to look. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> you know, you need you need the guys from MIT and NASA to hook up together. Well, we got Mike, so it's it's almost the same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mike does all our Old shifting mountain. and stuff like that. Makes it a little less. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, we get these these messages in the middle of the night. Go, I can't figure out. But never mind. <laughs> if I do this, and uh, yeah, never mind. Anyways, big congratulations to Jeff Shatler who is now uh, one of the coaches on the United States lacrosse. Um, a big spotlight on his career. We drafted 10th overall, 9th, uh, 2009 and 2018 NLL Champions Cup, uh, 2018 NLL Playoff MVP, 2011 NLL Transition Player of the Year and League MVP, four-time NLL All-Star, three-time Man Cup champion, Haudenosaunee Nationals box and field team member, uh, also a member of one of the teams in the Rebeski tournament. Oh. Yes, he played in, I believe, the Spirit Squad. It was, it was amazing watching him last year. You know, him and a whole bunch of other 
former NLLers getting together and having just some fun. Or other. Uh, a few other uh, little tidbits. There is um, <clears throat> Kyle Rubish is re-signed with the San Diego Seals for one year. Um, he looked great last night. You know, the cause turnover king uh, was doing just that. And um, he's a big asset to the San Diego Seals defensive core. Uh, without him there, I'm not sure what they would do because he is such a big piece there. All right. Um, heading into Arena Lacrosse, it was a big weekend. Playoffs have started. And uh, with the women, uh, you had their uh, championship weekend. Congratulations to the Skyhawk, Skyhawks, who won 6-3. And they are your Arena Lacrosse League East champions. That was over at the Arena Lacrosse, uh, over at the uh, ILA, um, Iroquois Lacrosse Arena yesterday. Congratulations to them. Uh, over in the um, ALL, uh, we had a game on Friday over in the Memorial Arena in Brampton. And Brampton faced the Peterborough Timbermen. A uh, very evenly played game for the first 20 minutes. Then the Express put it into another gear, scoring 10 of the next 12 goals over the next 18 minutes and four seconds. Uh, Brampton riding high. It was led by uh, Sam Dr Drumnitsky, Jake McNabb, and Jeff Whitting. To the Timberman's credit, they didn't give up. Led by Cam Milligan, who had five goals and three assists, Peterborough got within two goals early in the fourth, putting them in a five-goal five, uh, five goal run of their own. The Express got back on track, keeping, keeping Peterborough to just two goals the rest of the way while potting four of their own in the process. Brampton moves to the semifinals with a 16-12 victory. Over at the Rock Athletic Center yesterday, the early game had the Six Nation Snipers facing the Oshawa Outlaws, and I've been saying all year that the Oshawa Outlaws are a team to watch out for. Well, they beat the Six Nation Snipers like a drum. 23-9 to was the final in that game. Oof. Snipers looked good early. They got out to a 4-1 lead in the first quarter, but then the roof fell in. The Outlaws poured on the pressure, scoring 14 of the next 15 goals in just over 30 minutes to take a 19-7 to lead early in the fourth quarter. While the Snipers kept playing hard, the Outlaws had all the answers on the afternoon, holding them to just two goals the rest of the way. Oshawa now advances with a convincing 23-9 victory. The big surprise of the day, almost big surprise, was when Oswegan uh, faced the Whitby Steelhawks. Now, we know Whitby went 13-1 and this year. Oswegan barely got out of a 10-game losing streak. And this game finished with Whitby coming ahead 16-14. to A lot of sweaty brows over in Whitby yesterday afternoon. Evening. <laughs> The, uh, the Bears saved most of their uh, complete performances for the end of the season. Uh, they matched the Steelhawks punch for punch throughout the afternoon with the exception of six minutes at the end of the second quarter. During that time, Oswegan gave up five goals, putting them down nine to four at the half. The second half saw the Bears get further behind, giving up three goals to start the quarter. However, powered by five different scorers, the Bears scored four in a row to get back to 13-11, uh, with the 12 11 to go in the uh, in the quarter. Teams traded a pair of goals, but both defenses stepped up um, and it stayed a two goal deficit. Uh, Whitby advances with a 16 14 victory. This afternoon, over at the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena, the Toronto Monarchs and the Paris River Wolves uh, met up. And we know Paris has had trouble, <clears throat> excuse me, recently because of all the call ups, um, losing Andrew Q, uh, no, sorry, um, losing um, Andrew's brother. Alex. Nice. Alex Q, that's right. Name just <laughs> went across. Of course, he's on the Toronto Rock practice squad, so I should know this, right? <laughs> but uh, we also lost Marley Angus to the Rock and a few others throughout the season, and it kind of hurt them. But the game lived up to his billing of the game of the weekend. Back and forth struggle that had this thing tied at 13-13 after three. In fact, it was 15-15 with just 19 minutes or with just nine minutes to play. Toronto was able to put together a three-goal run in 45 seconds late in the fourth which was the difference in the game. Teams did trade goals a couple of times more, but the Monarchs were able to hold on for the 20 to 17 victory, advancing them to the semifinals. So next Saturday over at the track, um, the early game is 1 p.m. It is the Toronto Monarchs versus the Whitby Steelhawks. The late game is 4 p.m. And that will have the Oshawa Outlaws against the Brampton Express. 
and both games are worth <clears throat> your time to take a look at. Ten bucks Holocaust, guys. Winner of that play is on Sunday, Easter Sunday, 2 p.m. at the track. Uh, winner take all. And, uh, of course, we do have the West uh, finals, semifinals today. The Blackfish beat the Sea Spray 19-6, to and the Eagles beat the Grizzlies 14-4, to meaning that the Blackfish will play the Eagles on Wednesday for the championship over at Langley Event Center, 7 p.m. Pacific, if you're able to get there. Well, guys. Hey, Matt's with us. Hey, Matt. Matt, Matt, I need you. I need you to stick around because uh, we 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 need your opinion on the Bandits' playoff chances because I I got a I got a bone to pick with with this loss. <laughs> and, <laughs> okay, so you know, there's a lot of fans just kind of. I see comments that. No worries, no problem. You know, we're going to be okay. And, you know, you do have somewhat of an easier road for the rest of the season. You've got at Philly, and that's going to be the back end of a doubleheader for Philly this coming weekend. You're at Colorado, who you've already beaten once. You're home against Calgary, and then you're at Las Vegas. Here's my concern. <laughs> look at where they are in the standings and look at all the teams just above them and just below them. You have Halifax, who's whatever, half a game ahead of them. They have the tiebreaker on Buffalo. You got Georgia, who's now a full game ahead of you. They have the tiebreaker on Buffalo. <laughs> you got Panther City in a virtual tie, but... You just lost to them. They have the tiebreaker on you. Then you look at some of the teams below you. Sure, you've beaten Rochester twice. You beat Saskatchewan. But what about a surging Calgary team? If you lose to them, despite being at home, now they have a tiebreaker on you. If Colorado beats you, now they might have a tiebreaker with common opponents potentially. What if Vancouver keeps surging? <laughs> They'll have the tiebreaker on you. Uh, th this, this just doesn't seem as clear cut to me as it seems to most of the fan base. So if you're still there, Matt, we want your input. I want to know what you feel about the Bandits' playoff chances because I'm not sold on it. And, you know, I, I've, been, I've been pretty critical of them all season. But uh, but now I'm genuinely concerned <laughs> because it's what seemed like it was going to be a lock just a couple of weeks ago doesn't seem so much now. Absolutely, yeah, your guys' thoughts on yeah. it too because <laughs> they they got a lot of teams just above and some you know a little bit below, but who are on fire right now who either have tiebreakers or can have tiebreakers on. The uh, Bandits remind me a lot of the New England Patriots of old who played up or down to their competition. Yep. When Buffalo plays Toronto, they get up for it. When Buffalo plays San Diego, they get up for it. When Buffalo plays Vancouver, they go down for it. When Buffalo plays, I don't know, pick another team, Las Vegas, <laughs> they go down for it. Down. You, know, it's, it's hey, you, could, yeah. you could even put Albany in that conversation. Play, play yeah, well, Albany is uh, yeah. playing down underwhelming me recently but, too, and uh, Albany's but, uh, on uh, fire. And it took him, uh, it took him, just... it took him forever to convince me to start picking them. And I started yeah. picking them, and they started going south. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's a good thing I didn't pick them at the start. They might have gone zero and eight. <laughs> but I mean, I'm, with teams starting to bunch up, especially after this weekend, I'm, I'm. I'm legit concern that they're going to end up getting pushed out on a tiebreaker. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, yeah. I think, I think it's a realistic possibility. And while I haven't looked at how every other team in that kind of middle of the standing stacks up yet with their tiebreakers, um, I just get the sense that 
they're going to end up being the odd ones out. And then it's just going to be, you just, you lost to the wrong teams. <laughs> well, basically, yeah. they can win, basically they can win and kind of hold steady. It might be okay, but it, yeah, you lose one or even one or two down that stretch. Those tiebreakers are yeah. going to, yeah, come into play. Yeah. yeah really I mean, I mean honestly, the, the, the only, the only other one that might concern me is, is Panther city. You know, if, if Pan, if Panther City misses out on the playoffs by just one game, and you guys probably know where I'm going with this, everyone is going to point to that home loss to Las Vegas. Yeah. yeah. Where they let that trickler of a goal go yeah. in with two seconds left and then blew it in overtime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it's, it's it like, to me, that's, that's the kind of loss that's going to just – it will haunt the team next year if they don't sure. make the playoffs. Yeah. And that's when it sticks with them all summer. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Just just you know, kick yourself. Um, while we're uh, while we're on these uh, milestone thingies here, just before we get rolling with all the games, um Kyle Killen. Uh he's now at 200 career points. Congratulations, Kyle. Sticking with Vancouver, they had a lot of uh, milestones this week. Rebowering of 500 loose schools. Um, Keegan Ball with 400 points. Moving over to Toronto, Nick Rose with his weekly, you know, hit into the milestone thing. <laughs> Third all time in goalie wins now. He just passed Bob Watson with 106. He's one away from Patty O'Toole. And well, he's got a ways to go before he can catch Matt Vince, who's still piling on victories, right? Right. Yep. Uh, Jay Thornberry hit the 1900 loose ball mark. That's incredible. That's incredible. That's a great number. Yeah. Brandon Robinson with 200 career points. Or Connor Robinson, I'm sorry. Joe Russell now has 300 career goals. And lastly, Marshall Palace with 100 career points. Congratulations, Marshall. Now, we were talking about our picks, just to get this out of the way. <laughs> We were talking talking about uh, a bunching. Uh, talking about bunching uh, in the standings here. <laughs> uh, look at the bunching there now, guys. Yeah. Sean and Pat are tied still in first, 63 and 44, but Eduardo is <laughs> nipping at their heels, 62 and 45. I have made some gains this week also at 61 and 46. And Mike is moving his way towards the 500 mark, 51 and 56. <laughs> Not mathematically out of it yet. Well, still has a mathematical right, right, yeah. Great. <laughs> Great. I feel like Vegas right now. <laughs> still mathematically. <laughs> well, are, are they though? <laughs> I'm from San Diego Seals. Well, um, yes, they got the win. I'll give you that. Yeah. Did they overwhelm me? No. No, they didn't. And we'll get on to that, uh, all that firepower and can't score uh, thing that uh, is driving me wild. But uh, yeah, Vegas seems like their new Vancouver. It seems, right? Yeah. Yeah. Rough weekend. Man. Oh, yeah. We had, we had <laughs> some uh, really strange, really strange goings on. Uh, which brings us to our very first game, and we were already talking about that, and that's the, uh, the Bandits in Panther City. Malcolm scores four. Donville scores three as Panther City wins in overtime. <clears throat> Burns stars and lost five goals and two assists. He couldn't miss. Um, why don't we have a look at the highlights and then we will get chatting about this game. And thought about it, didn't. Oh, Quick shot. Wow. No, just off to the side oh. by Nantico. And then Buffalo comes right back and does give him some physicality. And there's Brandon uh, Goodwin. The new West Sandville. <laughs> Didn't take him long to tie it up. Cannot let guys get open off ball with Smith's vision. Smith looked. No, oh, shoot. There score! it is. Right there. And the assist came from Dane Smith. Hold Vince. Shot no. Dane Boot again covers up, and he's going to let it go to the empty net. Is it going to go? Oh, oh, it does. Nick <laughs> Dane Boot with a goal. Malcolm digs it inside, wide open, oh, shot, wow. score! 
And then, oh well. Nick DeMoo did not know where that went after the shot by McKay. Shot, no, goal! Shot, score! How quick was that? Shot is of Dave Smith and Josh Byrne. Shot, oh. score! The rifle shot! There's that transition goal over the top, but not only getting over the top and running and attacking the cage opposed to going parallel. Oh. scores on the steal! Just a five to play. The lead is at two. Buffalo riding a two-game win streak. Smith looks, shoot, oh, scores! Oh, oh, oh. Can't. Both teams at full strength. 70 seconds left in an exciting third. Oh, shot, wow. score! Off the feed from Thule Malcolm. That open, that open off ball right on the doorstep. Burn, look, shoot, scores! Oh, oh. Just a beautifully placed shot by Josh Byrne. Buffalo on loose balls in this ball game. Shot <laughs> score again! I mean, just the ball movement. They're just doing an incredible job. Look, shot, no! Oh. And goal line does trickle in. <laughs> the shot by Kluche. This game was big. And they're gonna have to prove it here with less than seven to go. Oh, oh, oh. score! I think Will Malcolm took offense to that. Play for Panther City. Down by one here in the fourth. Crawford looks. Oh, pass. Wow. It's a score! Will Malcolm again with his fourth. Eye on Josh Byrd. Nanako inside, shoots, oh, scores! Oh, wow. Nana Coke does an incredible job getting around. Back to Donville, shoot, oh. block. Man, their defenders are doing such a great job. Oh, Crawford wow. scores! Oh. The shot clock was at two. Crawford. Crawford, a couple of fakes, 15 to shoot. Shot, oh. score! Panther City with an overtime win. Jonathan Donville with a game winner. Well, let me address the first thing <clears throat> is the uh, goalie goal, Nick DeMood. Well, first off, congratulations, Nick. I think that's number three now in your career. Uh, you know, him one and off Nick the all-time record. record. Goal score, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one off the all-time record. There so. you go. Now, listening to people going, well, why did they pull a goalie? They're just getting greedy. Now, listen to me. It happens all the time with under 30 seconds left. There was 25 seconds left. You hold for the last shot, you get the shot. You had the ball in Josh Burns' stick. As you've seen, he had five goals on the night. He was pretty much, you know, 100%. Well, 98%. This particular shot missed the net, caromed off the back, and went the other way. DeMood fired a strike. More times than not, I see it happen. The goalies fire a shot down the floor, bounces over the net, bounces just wide or whatever, and we never talk about it. This one happens to be a strike, goes in there. Happens. The yes. end. Talk, talk to any coach in the league, they would have pulled their goalie in that situation every 10 time. out of time. Yeah. Yeah. Every single time. Was that the reason you lost? No. Maybe it was more of a question did Burn take that shot too early? He did. He took it at eight seconds. They should have taken it at four seconds. And then the ball didn't, you know, you hear the horn. Out of time to do that. Yeah. Dribbling into the net. But um, to, to go with the rest of it, you know what? It was an even game. Back and forth, very evenly played game. Um, Panther City has a lead going into the fourth. The Bandits do what the Bandits do. They get on a run in the fourth, score four goals. It looks like this thing is done. I've watched it many times. But Panther City, to their credit, kept fighting. Will Malcolm with a goal with 637 left. And then Callum Crawford, sorry, Will Malcolm with two goals to tie it up. Nanakoke scores with, uh, with 53 seconds left with a beauty from the top of the crease. And I thought that was it myself. Uh, it was another one where Buffalo steals it at the end. Crawford with 20 seconds left and two seconds left on the shot clock with a strike. Low to low, beautiful shot. And we're going to overtime. Both teams had chances in overtime. The thing lasted a couple of minutes. It just so happens 
to Jonathan Donville, who also was on fire in the evening with his third goal there. Uh, had a beautiful shot. Sidearm strike, skip shot into the far corner. It's over. Going to blame Vince for that? No. No. Because no. he washed up? No. No. So, yes. Was it unfortunate well, yeah, for I Buffalo mean, lost for Buffalo fans? <laughs> yes. Was it a elation for Panther City? Yes. But was it anybody's particular fault for this or that and the other, like I'm reading on all these pages? Hell no. No, I, I, I think maybe there's a little more angst about it because, you know, one again, <laughs> it's, it's a, you know, anyone, well, anyone right who's, yeah. Any, well, anyone, yeah. Any, any, anyone who knows what I just reeled off, you know, about the tiebreaker situation is probably a lot more concerned now. <laughs> um, you know, the other thing is, I, I think it, I think it probably bothers the fans more because you lost by one goal. And, you know, there's one goal that maybe, it, you know, you didn't <laughs> – could have been avoided possibly, you know. Uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But it, d- d- despite the explanation, I'm not saying I disagree with your explanation. But, you know um, – You I had to lead with 53 just, seconds left, Mike. Yeah. What more do you want? They had to lead. And maybe give credit to credit is due. I mean, Pather City came out and mm-hmm. kept pace with them. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Joanne Sorkin has a really great idea here is let the kids uh, lacrosse teams anywhere yeah. in the area in for yeah, free. Because yeah. way too many empty seats. And, sure, you know, sure. And just for yeah, optics. Um, you know, yeah. And if you're in the playoffs, optics, yeah. optics. Optics look terrible. Comes your favorite empty seat night is really getting old. They can't even shoot it right anymore because it's just so sparse. Um, like, I, like I mentioned to you guys when we were watching the game on uh, on Friday – is when I can notice people in the crowd that I know, that's not a good thing. And that they're Buffalo fans. And they're Buffalo fans. <laughs> yeah. So they're not them. even there for they're Panther there. City. Yeah. Yeah, they're not even Panther City people. You know, they're, I, I noticed more orange shirts than I did anything else there. So, you know, of that, you know, 300, 500, whatever in there, if 300 of them are Bandits fans, what did you really have? Bring your child to work. Dude. Yeah, it's unfortunate because everything I've seen now looks like in a beautiful arena. But beautiful arena, team that's yeah. really, really good, exciting to watch. You know, I enjoy watching them on the road when they're playing teams where I can get to, like Rochester, oh, yeah. or Toronto, or wherever, and because they're an exciting team to watch. And they have them in their backyard, and unfortunately, <laughs> nobody knows that they're in their backyard. Apparently, yeah. And I just, you know, I just want to. Give them, you know, a, a bit of credit, you know, obviously, <laughs> you know, it's, it's also about kind of, you know, what Buffalo did to, to lose the game. But, you know, I, I think uh, a couple of big things you can see, uh, you could see them pushing, uh, you know, that play where M- Will Malcolm, you know, beats out three bandits for that loose ball mm-hmm. <laughs> and scores, yep. you know, yeah. um, you know, that, that's, that's the kind of stuff, you know, you love to see, you know, from a team that's, you know, just compete every minute. Uh, I think putting in Ty Thompson was huge for them. I believe he had two goals in the yeah. game. That's right. Uh, you know, yeah. um, I think he went in place of Gautier. That's right. And, and Gautier has been stretch. kind of struggling lately. So I think that was a huge boost, you know, in addition well, to obviously. Got, uh, I got Tracy Kluski's uh, little clip from his press conference. This is a huge win for us. Um, and, and to be honest with you, even our, all of our one goal games this year, it's, it's starting to build a little bit of character in that locker room. Um, it certainly helps a lot when you play, you know, the defending champs. Um, and you're able to come, you know, come on top in, in those one goal games. I said to them last night in uh, a, a shoot up, at, at, at some point in any season, the coach hands over the keys and says, this is, you guys do with what with what we've been doing all year, what we've been preaching, you guys take control of it. And, and that's the most exhilarating part of the win for me tonight was that they did. I love the fact you said character because you've really seen that with this team too, that progression. They just keep getting better and keep getting better, keep getting better. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. absolutely. It's a, it's a team that's that's definitely hungry. <laughs> yeah, they want to get back in the playoffs. They they want to show that they can, that they can compete, and I, I think they are. So 
this is going to be a, a huge, uh, really a statement win for them. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's move on, shall we? And we had the next game on a Friday night, which was Calgary and Albany in another shocker in my eyes. And Calgary, uh, bases big night, four goals, two assists, leads away to an OT, OT win. Uh, Kurtz, Nets, Hattie, and defeat. But that's what, their third loss in a row now for Albany. Yeah. Yep. That's and... wrong time of the year for this. Yeah. Especially with Toronto uh, as their opponent in two weeks. And they're just getting healthier. But uh, let's look at the highlights of there, and then we will get into it. And Del Bianco makes another save from that long shot. Looking down the floor, has a man breakaway opportunity for Calgary. Shoots and scores. Shane Simpson in transition. Get in there. And eventually that is Walker that comes off the bench. He passes off. Firth now from well up. Takes the shot and scores. Sam Firth gets Albany on the board. At the draft, several trade opportunities. Now Leclerc takes the shot and Doug Jamison with another big save. And now here comes Albany back the other way. They have a two-on-one developing. They have the numbers. There's the shot, scores! It's dropped to Calgary, gets a chance here to turn it back. Simpson's ahead of the play, but once again, Albany does a nice job of getting back on defense. Simpson has a man, though. Shot, scores! Jesse King, second of the night! Just seven to work with on the shot clock, though, so Pace is going to have to work quickly. Pace has room. Shoots and scores! Tyler Pace with the goal, and we're tied up 4-4. They did cash in on that six on five. Now here's Pace with it. Shoots and scores! Tyler Pace picks the corner. As Hayden Dixon off the bench comes back to Courier with 10 to shoot. Now Taylor, Taylor passes off, nice pass to the side and scores! Oh, what a pass, and a nice finish from Hayden Dixon. Work it to Walker to Kurtz. Kurtz up high, winds, fires, scores! Ty Kurtz on the power play. 6-5, Albany back to within one. one. And again, this is a team that's been in tight ones the entire season, and Pace gets the hat trick on the power play. Make it 7-5 Roughnecks. Settle it, right? They they take a big hit, they get the loose ball, and they're mature enough to grab the ball, settle it, get a good possession here, and results in a goal. Yeah, there you go. That's how you finish that off. It's Simmons starting it, and Simmons, Simmons finishing it. King now up high, goes back and forth with Pace. Pace now winds, fires, and scores! Tyler Pace is feeling it. He's got four. There. Yeah, exactly. So just get into each offensive possession and what well, nice goal there by Ty Kurtz as he took the ta the pass from Paulus and threw a nice move on Del Bianco that's just seven to shoot though he's gonna have to find some space eventually has a man it's Paulus to that takes the shot oh Del Bianco somehow keeps that out ends. now Walker has it for Albany passes off there's the shot scores Travis Longboat beats Del Bianco. Now Firth will pass off to Simmons. Simmons now, still with it. Simmons over to the side of the net. Shoots and scores! It's Longboat again, and we're tied. Drew couldn't find him, and now Calgary plays it. Simpson has a partial break. Simpson to the net, and a big save by Jamison. And the defender passes off, gets the return pass, has some room, takes a shot, and he scores! Tanner Cook ends it and keeps Calgary's playoff hopes alive! Now, of course, two things two things stand out to me. Uh, number one, how teams disappear for big, big stretches on both sides. That's one. The second thing, of course, is what I said in the pickums is Jameson's Jameson against Del Bianco. And of course, you're going to have a low scoring game. And that's what you had. Yeah. Also kind of answers the first one, but for huge stretches, you know, you're talking about more than a quarter that uh, Albany doesn't score and Cal uh, Calgary gets back in the game. More than a quarter where Calgary doesn't score and Albany gets back in the game. That would be your fourth. And in between all that, you know, we have back and forth stuff going on. The first and third are, are free-for-alls. So it's, it's just very strange how, how that all worked out. 
Yeah, yeah, and that it, it's almost like that. You know that that's almost compounds. You know Albany's problem with their power play not being very effective, and, and that's going to hurt come playoff time for them. And another week so, where they're one for yeah. three, right? So okay. they didn't do very well this time either. You know, all the other all the other categories, you can take the boxes off for them. That is the elephant in the room. Yeah, but uh, yeah. shout out to those uh, those Marvel superhero night jerseys of Calgary's. So yeah, yeah. Th those were phenomenal with uh, with Black Widow on them, and uh, and the initiative that they were supporting. So. Yeah, unlike the Thor one here in Toronto. <laughs> the same one as the one that Halifax used. Ironically, they were playing Halifax. <laughs> but uh, we'll get to that in a few minutes. But uh, in this game here, guys, um, what are your takes? Albany. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm definitely concerned. I mean, you've lost three in a row now. And, um, you know, we obviously haven't discussed the uh, – San Diego Vegas game, but uh, but knowing that uh, San Diego has won now, they've moved into second place, you know. So, um, dropping fast, and you know, now you're now you're only a game ahead of Georgia as well. So, uh, question yeah. though, has uh, the league gotten smart to what uh, what Albany's been doing? And now there's a lot of film. Or is it the youth? Uh, the, we're now seeing the kind of that youth and experience coming through with Albany. I, I think it's a mix of both, you know, you know, teams are going to have film now on these guys and, uh, you know, the, uh, you're, we're what two thirds, three quarters of the way through the season. And, you know, it's, uh, it's, as we know, it's a different pace for everyone, you know, whether you're, whether you're, you know, coming out of juniors, whether you're coming out of a, you know, a couple of school, whether you're coming out of NCAA, you know, um, moving into box, you know, you always hear from the rookies, oh, the pace of the game. Oh, you know, I, I didn't realize it was so fast. I got to get used to, you know, I got to yeah. get used to the speed of the game. So, you know, now you've had that speed of the game for 15 games and. That know, just ramps up just a little bit more at this time of year, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So everything is this that much more magnified. Every error is that much more glaring. But, uh, you know, credit to Jameson, man. He made some incredible saves down the, down the stretch or this thing wasn't going overtime anyway. Yeah. So uh, a little bit too much reliance upon one's goalie as well, I think. So it's only so much he can do. So it'd be interesting because, like I say, they have Toronto in two weeks and, uh, you know, the Rock are looking for uh, home playoffs. Throughout, so they're not yeah. going to ease up, lay down. and they're also going to be bringing in their players who are have been hurt, so they're going to be going full tilt boogie. Um, so with less practice squad guys than they've had all year on, because they've had injuries since week one. So <laughs> can you imagine yeah, feeling like the advantage yeah. of last year, where everybody finally got healthy, just as the season was ending, and they ramped it up in time to go on a mass run to win a championship. Same thing with yeah, like happening in Toronto. And I'll just add, um, <laughs> after that Toronto game in two weeks, it doesn't get any easier. You're at Panther City and then at New York to end the season. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it doesn't those, get any easier. Those, both of those teams are, you know, very well could be fighting for maybe the last playoff spot, depending how things go. Right. So, yeah. so uh, it, it just you don't have it easy from here on on out. Um, you know, Calgary, uh, their road looks a little bit different. They're they're off next week, but you know now you're six and eight, and then uh, two weeks from now you've got a home and home on consecutive days with Saskatchewan, who, you know, <laughs> are tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had, tired. Had, yeah. Had, we'll get this, 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 this will be we'll the get to that. But they're they're tired. Yeah. Days and fifteen. You know, they had about fifteen was, minutes of sleep last night. Fifteen days. So. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and oh, we'll then, get uh, yeah, and then they're at Buffalo, and then they host Panther City to finish the season. So, so this is going to be, yeah, that's going to be yeah. quite an interesting road for them, for sure. Let's move on, guys. Um, as we uh, can see by our motifs, 
Sean's wearing a uh, Vancouver Stealth cap. I've got a Vancouver Warriors cap and a San Jose Stealth Colin Doyle jersey. Mike has got his Vancouver jersey on the uh, on the board. Sorry, fans, but uh, your team didn't do very well uh, yesterday. Um, they lost by a couple of touchdowns. If I read the comments correct, <laughs> yes. Uh, there you go. Those are three touchdowns. Yeah. Oops. Anyways, um, let's have a look at the, uh, well, you know, ball drops monster game, eight goals, five assists, and a road win. Jones shines for the wings with four goals and six assists and a loss. Let's look at the highlights or lowlights, depending on which side you're on, and we will take a look and talk about it. That they are. And wings are going with strategic matchups right there. You saw Mitch Armstrong. We have a goal right there. And that is a fantastic move by Keegan Ball. Puts Vancouver on the power play. Pace in the box. Vancouver's power play, 13th in the league, 39% on the year. But they get one very, very quickly. Clock. It's going to be about 11 or 12 seconds left when the wings get this ball back if it goes all the way down. Here's Crowley up high. Fires and scores. Kevin Crowley, a shorthanded goal. And that Plus around the world, TSN Plus as well tonight. It's a busy night around the NLL. We'll keep you posted on some of the other action going on around the league later on. Here's Jones coming out in front, and he scores. Mitch Jones. First quarter, but had been getting handily outscored in the second and third. So perhaps opportunity here for Philadelphia. Here's a chance in front, though, and Vancouver puts it home. Let's look at the penalty behind the net. I couldn't see it, but it was Brad McCauley. Looks like he cross-checked Armstrong, who was behind the net. And there's a power play goal for Philadelphia as Mitch Jones pulling out of midair by Braden Lady. And here he comes down the floor with it. Lady shoots and scores! And the Vancouver bench loved that one. Wraparound shot by Jones. Great save. Jones off left side for Reza Terrence, and he scores! Joe Reza Terrence forces one through. He gives it to Sam LeClaire out the front door. Katoni on this right side. Fires and scores! Holden Katoni overpowers the goaltender. And so it's going to be Vancouver ball to start things off here on the power play. Late penalty for roughing against Ryan Wagner and an early power play goal as Keegan Ball fires at home. Four and nine on the season, 14th place. They need to make some moves. They've got some youngsters that are putting the ball in the net and a vet like Ball jams it in right there. Someone off the bench and the wings will move it around. 10 to shoot for Reza Terrence. Comes out in front, fires and scores! Joe Reza Terrence skip five on three here for Vancouver. They're executing it as a four on three and they put it home. As on that right side, it's Martell. Happened. Ball moves it left side. A quick stick shot wide. Ball gets it back. Thinking about it. Now fires and scores. Keegan Ball. Put Here's Ball again, looking for more on that left side, and he puts it home again. What a third quarter here for Keegan Ball. And Vancouver looking to add to this. They've got that lead all the way back up to six. Headed to the net, it's low, and it's waved off. After review, the call on the floor has been overturned as the shooter was clean prior to the ball going in. We have good goal. Just, I'm not sure I've seen him on the floor other than face-offs tonight, but uh, his... Uh, bolstering that part of the game for the Vancouver Warriors who just got a seventh goal of the game from Keegan Ball. Left side, it's moved out to Ball. Ball, oh, behind the back! Oh my goodness, Keegan Ball with an exclamation point. Why not? Why not make it eight? You sense a little bit of disgust from Scott Gabrielson. Yeah, yeah, just a little. 21 to 12, so uh, you Rush fans, I'm not talking about the team, I'm talking about the music group. <laughs> 21 to 12. <laughs> but uh, um, what can we talk about that's good that happened for Philadelphia other than Mitch Jones? Oof, 
No, not, not a whole lot. Not a whole they, lot. Pulled out, they pulled out Zach Higgins after 15. Deacon not went in for 22 minutes, faced 12 shots, gave up six goals. Not the second coming of uh, of Bob Watson by any stretch, but you know, coming in cold to a team that's obviously hot and a defense that's obviously cold. Um, spring break theme. And uh, as someone had mentioned, uh, it looked like the defense well, already went on spring break themselves. Uh, I'm assuming that's why Pat's not with us tonight. Uh, he's still mourning this uh, this loss. Uh, we had to get a few black armbands for the rest of the, uh, the group. And, uh, you know, we got candles and a few other things going on. Uh, it's not a pretty sight over there in the, in the Wingsland. Um, I'm trying to trying to figure out which end is up. Um, there's the draft. It's it's almost time to uh, uh, call this one a year, I think. Yeah, the team just wasn't that interested either. I was just gonna say, you know, all the talk about Higgins. I mean, he's been hard to try all season. Just what more can he do? I know he had a rough outing, but what more can he do to keep this team in? He's done everything he can. Um, so the fact that he had a bad night, I mean. Well, that just goes. To I show think he that can't he handle because he can't do it. Night. He can't do it. He can't single-handedly do it. He came in and came out. Right. But the same, the same single most point is is if he has a bad night, they have a terrible night. Yeah. Because they just thought, can't right? put it together on offense or deep. They have all this firepower, which really puzzles me. You know, you have all stars in Joe Russell, Mitch Jones, Tate Katoni, Holden Katoni, let alone the whole rest of others. And they just don't seem to be able to work well together. And I can't figure out why. Because, um, well, four of them, three of those guys, play together in the summer in Peterborough. Play very well together. Dominant. Here, they look like they're new at it. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. I'll maybe say a little bit that 12 isn't, I mean, the worst number in the world. But again, if you're giving up 21, what hope do you have? Well, exactly. Let's say let's say that um, that, uh, that Higgins had a, had a, you know, the stellar night, and he only gave up 12. And Nock came in and gave up six. You're still nowhere in the ballpark, 18 to 12. Yeah. Right. You can have all the offense in the world in this game. There's not There's many the teams that are 20 yeah. plus goals. And what are you going to have? One of those old mill scores of 24 to 22? Yeah, that's not happening. Yeah, that's for sixes. Yeah. For right. ALL and sixes, 36 to 31. And I'll, scoring's down, right, Mike? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Memo to those fans online who think scoring's down. I mean, goodness. Yeah. Well, that'll bring you to the next few games, right? But, uh, um, it's weird, you know, because <clears throat> everybody's calling for this and calling for that. Um, I think that um, Philadelphia is actually sitting in some pretty good position if they draft well. Because they do have a lot of young pieces in there. Yes, they have some veteran guys in there who are probably going to go. But that may not be the worst thing in the world. Probably. and Pretty rich draft coming up, too. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, and, time. And, yeah and I mean, I, I Obviously, that that pick didn't get better with uh, with Colorado winning this weekend, obviously, and and Vegas losing. But uh, but okay, let's go worst case scenario, Mike. Instead of one, it's two. You still get yeah, a very good that's player. Still for a damn good player too. It's still yeah, yeah, two, yeah. two, two or three. But uh, but I'm wondering if you could you get know, a game changer. Whereas Tiger Clark is a good player, but I don't think he's a game changer. I think he's another piece. To a to an offense, because um, well, yeah, you know, he just fits in. He's not that, you know, that immense Jeff Teat kind of. My God, we have the next coming, right? We have the next, True. you know, Casey yeah. Powell in here. We have the next Gary Gate in here. No, no, but you know, with that pick, there's that opportunity. True. Um. But you have to wonder if uh, maybe maybe he's uh, maybe Paul Day is gonna take a page out of Glenn Clark's book and uh, just go younger. I mean, that's what Albany's done, and you know they I think they got three guys on the roster that are over thirty. 
and that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and look where they are right now. So, but, uh, you know, getting some, uh, some decent defensive power would be a real good start. Oh yeah. That's number one. Yeah. Just fixing that defense. Yeah. I agree. All right. Well, where there's uh, no problem in defense, we, uh, we head over to Toronto or Hamilton to be more specific. And uh, Matthew scores a game-winning goal in OT. Propelled Rock to a dramatic comeback win. Um, the young Ryan Banesh, that's a Hattie in defeat. <clears throat> Another one of these uh, games. Now, I rewatched this game this morning. And, uh, yes, there was a lot of things that were strange to me. And I am the first one to back officials and the tough job or damn near impossible job that they have. There were some real inconsistencies in last night's game. Real inconsistencies. I know the league reviews and sends notes over. I imagine the uh, the notepad would look something in the neighborhood of this uh, this morning because there were a lot yeah. of things that were really, really strange to me, to a number of people. Uh, but it wasn't just on one side. When I rewatched it, I noticed that uh, I think Halifax was angrier at the refereeing than Toronto which was strange. But uh, anyways, let's have a look at the highlights um, and we'll talk about it from there. That opening power play of the game, still scoreless in Hamilton. Swung on by Banesh and that will find the back of the net. Rose looked like he had it. Ironic timing of this, he's currently serving two as the Rock are on the penalty kill. And feed will bury. Thunderbirds on a roll, a three-goal run to start. Can finish it off on the short side. Rock trying to get back to it, tend to shoot. Heavy hit there on a collision. Armstrong and Lindner. We'll see what they have in the second. Small, little stutter step, cuts back. Swings to Bushi, stop. Rebound right there. Big start to the second. Quarter for the Rock if they can capitalize here. Matthews up top, swings, Matthews gets it back, plant, shoot, scores! What a laser from Mark Matthews! Then it RS Breakers and controls, power play, shakes with lots of room out there, Banesh. Now in tight, Jamison Belcher scores! Play out of some coverage, moves to Shanks. Set up, Banesh, shoot, scores! Off the delayed call, Banesh buries his second of the game. Don't, but we will take them as they come as long as we're playing the game that we want to play. And, and Shani and John, I don't know if, if that qualifies tonight. It beats Rose. It continues to tip on both sides. Undisciplined game from both teams. And Schreiber awakens to bury against Hill. Withers. With Craig cutting through, shortened RS Breakers and controls power play, and then a dot there to get it done. What a way to bring it back for the Rock as Craig. The look swings over to Feed. Feed has Banesh on a two man game, finds him, shoots, scores! Hat trick for Ryan Banesh. In the fourth, Schreiber denied by Hill. Rose stays put. Second chance, all kinds of twisters. Driver scores! He took it upon himself. And that'll be nullified off a of play in front as Hasek gives it up now in tight. Matthews alone scores! Matthews with the final blow. Wins it in overtime. Now, they showed the hard check on Lintner, right, which to me was legal, legal. And there was lost I possession. Could, I said, was about to say, I'm glad they actually didn't make a call on that. Oh, well, yes, but the, the one that yeah. came later that wasn't on this clip of uh, Chris Bushy, uh, which was also, in my opinion, a hard pick, which with anything, <clears throat> maybe lost of possession. These guys called a five and a game on Bushy and on review kept the five which I doubt it was even a two. So does that mean a big difference? Well, yes, a five-minute penalty is still a five-minute penalty. And uh, ironically, about a minute later, they call a Halifax guy for a double minor. 
problem solved, right? Four on four. And you saw a goal at the end of the uh, third quarter. But uh, how about that Schreiber goal at the end of the game? Dipsy doodling, deking and cutting, and then scooping with your backhand. How many players have the guts <laughs> to do that with uh, oh but to less than a minute to, go to tie the game? <laughs> Yeah, those are the guts of the skill to even be able to do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Meanwhile, you know, all through the uh, <clears throat> all through the broadcast, they were talking about how they're not calling Shriver's name much. Well, when they needed to, they did, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. The funniest comment I heard was from Brian Shanahan with the uh, Marvel Comics, of course, and uh, you know the Thor outfit, and there's Nick Rose, <laughs> and Brian goes. I never thought I'd be talking about Nick Rose's abs. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, kudos to Brian for the joke. Um, of course, uh, Marvel uh, comic night, which brings me to the, uh, the rush from a number of years ago when they uh, came up with. That was before Marvel night was even a thing. Oh, so. Before Marvel night was even a thought. So, so. Better thing. A lot more to do in this thing, too. Even had uh, word searches and everything. Yep. Now, apparently, these uh, these particular things are the same everywhere. Talking about the indigenous and all the history in there. And the covers change for whatever team it is. So, awesome. Pretty cool thing. Cool stuff, pretty cool thing. Yeah. I, uh, I love it. Any, any way you can get the information out, especially... Now you're gearing it towards kids and have them learn, learn it correctly. All the power, all the power to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Can't get enough yeah. of these kind of things and the fun. And I watched a lot of people in costume and it was a lot of fun to watch everybody around there. So nine, eight victory for Toronto. Toronto moves to uh, 12 and four, 12 and three. I'm sorry. And uh, the big thing in that is that they now clinch a home game in their playoff run as they're looking towards entire home field advantage. And, uh, you know, unlike Scotiabank Arena in Toronto, <clears throat> the place in Hamilton is loud. They had just under 10,000. It was a loud building. So uh, it will be an advantage right. come playoff time. All right, let's move on to uh, Colorado Rochester, guys. Another shocker, at least in my eyes. Williams and McLaughlin each score four to propel Mammoth the home win. Fields Nets hat trick for the Nighthawks. Now we've been talking about the Nighthawks heavy duty scoring. Um, it didn't make the trip. So let's look at the highlights and we'll go from there. We will keep the pronunciation straight. Another goal for Ryan Lanchberry. Lanchberry just going to the slot and fired it home. The PLL, Jamie, I want your opinions here. Chris Wardle no longer with this team. Connor Robinson goes in and he fires and scores. We'll get back to that thought in a second. Imagine right now, we should mention that Connor Kelly's not playing for Colorado tonight, missing his second straight game. There's a shot and a goal, Ryan Smith. That, all I can call that is nifty. Lanchberry with it again now. He's going to work in. Thought about it. Now works back opposite side. And there's another little hop, and this time I believe it will count. At a power play without Chris Wardle. Oh, there's some nifty back and forth passing. Now Zed has it. He finds a way to twist it in. He got it by a defender that was Tyler Biles. Evans brought his defender back, and the defender blocked the pass but it doesn't matter Connor Fields is going to find a way to get the ball back and fire it in for another goal and things well only allowing one goal in the second quarter good for him Brett Craig he's been a little bit on a score tear and he does it again and then nearly impaled well it seemed like the first few shifts that Rochester had the mammoth were being sucked out getting beat underneath talk about not not getting out on sticks and I think they've made those adjustments and there's a beauty number 51 Eli McLaughlin goal He's 6'4", 236. There's a pass and a shot from Zed Williams. Zed Williams just shoved his defender off of him. Hold tonight. 
There's a the guy you guys talked about shooting more. Zed, though, feeling it. Now up to Robin. I nope, that's McLaughlin. He'll get his second of the quarter in Colorado. Subbing in is going to be McLaughlin. Smartly gets to him. Oh, I thought McLaughlin had a little bit of a rain. Oh, what a twist and turn move. That is a goal. We'll have to double check that the feet were outside of the creek. The ball out of his stick is huge. McLaughlin gets it up top to Zed, and he finds a way to sneak it under. A big hop that snuck under the crossbar, and Colorado gets the goal back. Box. Yep, so we're down for another 30 seconds here for the Colorado Mammoth. Oh, oh. Zed Williams gets the nifty shot top corner. Colorado sneaking Gibson to the other side, and that's going to be a goal. They were basically down a guy already. Then someone got their stick snapped in half. There it is by night again. It's open. See, Dylan thought about it, took a good look, but not yet. Now, Joey Capito, he works the trailer in from behind. Eli McLaughlin, Hutchcraft was watching Capito. And there it is. My, um, my initial thing is that Rochester started out well. They're up 4-1 after one, and I had one goal in each quarter after that. What happened? I think they were distracted by Baby Shark playing for about half the game. <laughs> so um, I, 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 I can confirm that it played through Ball Arena for most of the second half. So, uh, no, <laughs> it's <laughs> – <laughs> uh, it, It's definitely concerning, though. Uh, you drive me to know. drink. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's definitely concerning. Uh, just, just – you know, I, you know, at halftime, I thought, well, okay, you know, they're they're finally gonna get, you know, they're finally gonna get a, a low scoring defensive kind of victory, where you know, mm -hmm. the, the the offense is gonna maybe not put up what 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 we're used to seeing, but the defense is gonna make up for it, and then <laughs> then that run in the third quarter happened, and in about five and a half minutes, it, it went from a two goal lead to a four goal deficit. So. <laughs> Yeah. Now, um, we saw some Doug Buchan in there also last night um, in relief of Riley Hutchcraft. Interestingly enough, um, I had uh, met up with uh, Ryland Hartley's mom yesterday evening uh, before the Rock game. She was in attendance at the Rock game, and we had a little conversation. He's well on the mend. Uh, he's back to work and uh, doing other things and um, talking about concussions or going to be talking about concussions with teams and things like that. Um, I um, have the suggestion that um, that he gets in touch with Casey Zaff. And the two of them work together because Casey's been a, a big proponent of this because he nearly died through concussions from his career over in Rochester. Yeah. And um, yeah. he's a, a high school coach now. And um, I really, I really think that the two of them should hook up and, um, uh, work together in the concussion protocols and the rest of that, because it's no joke. It's life altering. And um, he looks like he's going to be well, okay. And, um, you know, he might still play who knows, but um, you know, I'm, that really wasn't for <clears throat> our conversation there. I'm hoping to get him on, uh, on the other show. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, it was interesting talking with his mom and uh, uh, they're big followers and we appreciate them. Thank you so much. And uh, for all the patronage, we really appreciate it. But uh, to get in with uh, Colorado, we thought they were done, didn't we? Yeah, we certainly yeah. did. But <laughs> now they're going to play spoilers. Now, yeah, they? yeah. They're, they're, yeah. They're, they're, they can have fun three. doing that, playing spoilers. Yeah, yeah. That big three definitely proved us wrong. And I mean... You know they're only they're only two games out in the win column, out of the playoff spot. So uh, that's this new system. Know, right? yeah, nobody's nobody's out of it. Nobody's really. technically out of it. Yeah. 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 So and uh, you know they have a somewhat favorable remaining schedule too. They've got uh, their home against Buffalo. You know who you know they would like some revenge on. Certainly, you know not only for 
the game earlier this season, but a certain game three last year. <laughs> Could you see uh, Dylan Ward coming up with the uh, the game of games and that's the game that knocks Buffalo out of the playoffs? That would be, if it's anything Talk like this spoilers. game, I mean, this, yeah. this, this was, spoilers. I mean, seven goals allowed, 44 saves, and, uh, I mean, very quiet, <laughs> very quiet dominant performance. So, but I'm also looking at maybe he's actually getting healthier. Yeah, I think that was the issue all We're year. We're talking about that week after week. Yeah. But it just doesn't it could seem be. to look right. Could be. I mean, you know, all the way to game three of the finals last year, you know, game three of the finals the year before, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you stick two PLL championship games in between all that, you know, yeah. um, the worlds. Well, injury uh, and exhaustion, world, you know. Sorry, not only the world field, but uh, world box in 21. Yeah. yeah. You know, winning gold. So, um, really, in the end, this was kind of the Colorado team we were looking for, wasn't it? Like, waiting for all year, right? Yeah. They make a couple of moves and now they're actually becoming that. Weird. Yeah. Very, very strange. All right. Let's move on. Uh, New York, Saskatchewan. And, well, the Riptide come out. T Dazzles with an incredible 13 point night. Four goals and nine assists lead Riptide to the W. Church scores four for the rush, but I've been saying forever. If you let Teeth free, he's going to kill you. And Rush now are victims. <laughs> Let's have a look at the highlights, and then we will talk about it. Medronic or scratches for the Riptide tonight. Whistling in here, and it's an early goal for the Riptide diving in. Tag what a start here for Tagger Clark. It's worthy this year, Mitch. Sundown gives it up over to Teat circling around on Barnable. Chance at the doorstep, spinning, and another goal for New York. You saw he tried to reach over and go for the dunk. Sundown back to Teat. That's too easy from Teat. Compliments of Sundown. It's a 4 2 game. An illegal pick on Keo comes back out for Saskatchewan. Chance here on the breakaway. Here with Boudreaux. Gives it up, man. Flying out of the front door. Church. Dunkerley lost it. Church gets the goal. It's a 4 3 game there on that left-hand side. It is Matisse, Teat, by the way, with one goal. Matisse spinning away, goes low, and scores! That was majestic from Moose! To Dave Leno, Mitch Belisle, Grant Delvecchio between the benches, riptide against the rush. Chance here, Connor Cannon behind the back! That was beautiful! Looking to continue that play, here now as the head coach was an interim for Jeff McCobb. Dunk opportunity! Oh, that's it for New York from the back! Four, four moments earlier in the second. Here's Manns with a jab step. With the bounce shot, Zach Manns! That's the man that Saskatchewan is counting on. There, Halifax jumped out to a 4-0 lead. They are up 5-3 now in the third quarter. Oh, another goal for the New York Riptide skipping in for New York. It is Jeff Teat. That's his second action out there on the floor. See what Matisse can do against McClellan. Kiernan dipping inside. Sundown! Downstairs! It scores! Number two for Sundown! They're feeling good right now, although they got a whole nother 30 to worry about. Triolo, the four goal deficit. One time shot! Good! Keenan! That's his second tonight. The rush needed that. A little his friend and teammate Teat. O'Connor. Back over to Teets, over the right side! There's a goal for Keo. Keo defensively. I'd love to see Manns with some space. The Riptide have done a good job of limiting him, but when he gets alone, or how about Keenan? Yep, that's a hat trick for Keenan. Ryan Keenan. Warriors over a struggling Philadelphia. Keo over the top scores! That's a big one for Keo. That is second! Keep racking them up, Steven! Get all of the 30 here, but you do want to move the ball quickly. Keo with the rebound, open cage, he scores! Back to back for Keo! Bach, congratulations to the rush. An official takes a spill. That looks like me out there, Mitch, on the turf. That does escape, and it's a church goal for the outside. A soft one by Dunkerley, and another for church in the game. It's now 12 10. Win. Sass can move into a playoff spot with a win tonight and a comeback. T has a hat trick, scores! That was nasty from Teet! 
That's the name I keep hearing and keep hearing and keep hearing. Yeah. And we uh, say well, everything runs through teeth. Oh, well, yes. And uh, well, Rochester better get it in gear next week, whatever, because in two weeks' time, they get New York and teeth. And uh, he likes to feast. So weird, weird stuff going on. Um, Keel, you look good, didn't he? Yeah, I was going to say the difference between last week with Riptide this week. It was Keo was in the lineup. That definitely made a difference, didn't it? Well, yeah, you know, and uh, it's just it's more more than just a presence. Number one, he can score, but number two, he's tough as nails inside. Yeah, and he can cause havoc setting picks because you're not going to move him. And guess who gets room when he does that? Jeff or, Keith. <laughs> yeah, or any of the other, uh, you know. But you know, it's funny because when T goes crazy, you know, it's very silent. Everywhere else, right? Now, we did have a Matisse showing. That was nice. You know, a little bit of a Kiernan yep. showing. I still think we need more. Oh, uh, didn't Tiger Clark have a hat trick? Yes, he did. Yep. So. <laughs> he's fitting in right so, in since that trade. He's in, but yeah. the other guys aren't. <laughs> Funny how that works. So, with the moves of having Keo and Clark in there. That's what's keeping him afloat because the guys who are supposed to be doing it were there. Because, again, we've seen it, right? When Teat goes silent, there's really nothing behind him. True, true. But I, I also think, I mean, I think Rich Lisk, Lisk explained that, you know, when he made the trade for Clark, was that eventually he envisioned the right side being, being Clark, Kiernan, Austin Madronic and Colton Lidstone, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. all of who were, you know, going to be under say 25, you know, right. To, uh, to basically try to keep that core together. Yeah. You know, cause I mean, let's face it. They're, they're set for a few years on the left side with T and Riley O'Connor and Larson Sundown. So. Well, they can get this thing to gel. But they're, yeah. uh, they're in good shape. Again, I uh, I ask, is Cam Dunkerley the answer? He made more sense than Chiliano. <laughs> okay. But, uh, so, I mean, uh, in the long term, though, I mean, for one game, I mean, but even you saw that one goal by uh, Church, it was kind of a soft one, right? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just curious, though, because um, right now, this is where they're putting their money. So should they be looking at drafting a goalie <laughs> or they leave that alone? And uh... possibly, but, but I mean, but I mean, couldn't we be applying this same logic to Georgia with Brett Dobson or Vancouver with Aiden Walsh? I was going to say, if you draft a goalie too, we know how long it takes for a goalie to be NLL ready. Uh, very few jump right in. You're still going to need at least a couple of years to develop that goaltender if you draft them. Unless right. you've got something up your sleeve that no one knows. Like The difference between those two, though, Mike, is that they have some form of veteran uh, mentorship. Um, Aiden That's Walsh, of course, has bold. And uh, you have, I believe, Angus Goodleaf over in Georgia. That's true. That's and Cam Dunkley has Will Johnson. Not really the veteran leadership that you need as a mentor. So he's kind of figuring it out in the dark on his own and kind of, you know, trial and error. So that maybe what you need is that, forward. that veteran backup that can be that mentor. Because right now, if they're getting bombed, and I watched in Toronto, uh, they weren't pulling him. He's just going to take the beating because uh, Will Johnson isn't going to be the, uh, the off switch. So um, I'm, I'm thinking – there's a number of goalies that could be that veteran leadership. Whereas if you're not going to use Will Johnson, um, I'm sure somebody else can count to five too. Just saying. I'm not saying he's not uh, the goalie of the future. I just think that uh, probably having a better uh, mentor on there would be a, an asset yeah. to his development. So I think consistency is probably the best word for Don Curley. Um You'll see some great games out of them. You'll see some not-so-great games out of them. 
Hey, how's it going, Brian? Good to have you with us. Brian. Uh, how about Craig Wendy? I uh, love the idea. And uh, yeah. I was going to allude to that as the uh, mentorship when Dobson took over for the starting job in Georgia. <clears throat> and then Wendy went over to Halifax briefly in the off season and training camp. But of course they have Hutchison there and uh, he's almost ready to be at that goal. And you got Warren Hill. So you got pretty good leadership there. So Craig Wendy would be a great idea. And I, I believe he's available. Yep. Yep. Well, one more weekend, then he's available. Wouldn't that be a kick in Toronto's teeth if they <laughs> <laughs> semifinal final? And uh, sorry, your goalie's gone. But anyways, just a thought. You know, like I say, I, I don't say that he's not the answer, Mike. But I'm just yeah. curious about um, development and to get him to the next step. And, or is this no, the that's last? A, and that's, that's, a, that's definitely a good point. The the, yeah. the mentorship point is compared right. to the other two. So, yeah, I just I just see that uh, the the potential is there, sure, but you need that or one hell of a coach. And I don't see any of these boxes being ticked. So, um, we have uh, San Diego and Vegas, and once again, we have one of these close games. And San Diego wins in overtime. Leclerc scores a game-winning goal in OT. Clinch a playoff berth for the Seals. And they are the second team to clinch. Now, the simple fact of the matter is a win is a win is a win is a win. Whether it's, you know, 10-9, 14-3, 200-5, doesn't matter. A win's a win's a win. But when you are touting this kind of firepower and you're coming from behind, and to a team like Vegas, I get a little bit nervous on my own thing. Let's look at the highlights. Here early. Rob Hellier with time and room, and he buries one from outside. The captain for Las Vegas puts them up 1-0. So San Diego trying to counter that with some aggressive stick checks gets called. Good look, and it falls for Casey Jackson. They hardly need any time on the extra man at all to take a 3-0 lead as Jackson nets his 35th for one tonight, thanks to this guy, Casey Jackson. Over to Hannah. Now Greer at the point. Rips it past Joel Riglieri. Time and room for Zach Greer as the former SEAL burns his old group. And who was scratched tonight. Leclerc to stop, still scoreless. Dunbar, quick stick, and he beats Cowles. Clock nearing the two-minute mark in the second. Dunbar scores again! <laughs> then Kells rebounds after the goal by Dunbar to make the save. Now up to Connor, curse, curse, Steve's oh, the high my. corner! Oh man, Connor, curse, extending to make the catch. Still 10 seconds on the shot clock. Career two in the first quarter. Up to King, and he stings the far corner. A missile from Marshall King. He has the shot clock winding down, and Stotts pulls it near side. Berg to Leclerc. Barry's at the end of the shot clock. Oh, wow. Stotts thinking about a dunk attempt. Up to Berg. Now to Doby. Scores! The Seals lead for the first time tonight as Dane Toby buries on the power play. Now Greer. O'Riglieri makes the save, and they've got a man out running. It's Trey Leclerc. Leclerc scores! Go crazy, San Diego. You're headed to the postseason. Now, again, to get back to our conversation, Mike and Sean, um, Kells and Riglieri, real good example. Kells has, uh, well, Joel Watson's his backup. Riglieri has Mike Poulin as his. Mentorship, non-mentorship. 
Who's going to advance quicker, do you think? Yeah, I think we're seeing the same problems with Kells that we see with Dunkerley. Inconsistency. Some games he's looking great. He had a great game. But then uh, some yeah. games he just but, uh, looks you know, He made 54 terrible. saves. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you know, again, he's got the Higgins problem there where the defense leaves him hung out to dry or rely too much on his abilities. Because, uh, you know, it looked good. For the longest time, it looked good. And there's only so long you're going to hold back all of that steam before it <clears throat> blows through the door. And sure enough, you know, but does it take till the fourth before they get their first lead? All that firepower. Yeah, I was looking down the score sheet other than, well, Trey Claire with three, but everyone else had twos. And other than 6.9 from Westburg, which is kind of a typical night for him, your next guy's Dunbar. Yeah, Dunbar's uh, actually fit in real nicely. Uh, he has, but really I mean, games. And I, nothing against Dunbar, but you're expecting more out of guys like Dane Dobie, right? But you like got for, Curtis Dixon sitting out. Yeah, yeah. Curtis Dixon sitting, sitting out. You expect more out of Austin Stotts, right? Austin Stotts, man. Uh, if there's a guy who's got his number, of all people, it's Landon Kells. Yeah. He, he, he just can't seem – he got one goal. He had about 15 shots. 17 shots. He just can't seem to beat him. And it might be getting into his head a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, when I look at some of the other guys on there, Jesse Gamble had a knockout, dragout fight. My God. So much so that he had to replace his number seven with a number one <laughs> after he got uh, stitched up. But uh, that's the Jesse Gamble I remember in Toronto. Not the biggest guy. But boy, oh boy, is he tough. The bulldog. If you ever watched that Jesse Gamble workout, he is strong like bull. Yeah. Just, you know, fist of fury when he does go. But again, guys like Kyle Rubish, great game. Great game. You know, 13 loose balls, four cause turnovers, and very, very timely. You know, um, whenever uh, Vegas is starting to get on that run, He's there to knock it out. So, what are we thinking about uh, San Diego going forward? Are they as good as the record indicates? Uh, Win's a win. That's what I said. <laughs> Again, and 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 they, I think they have the best record of any team at home right now. I think they're the only one loss team at home. So. Right. Uh, so this is huge for them <laughs> yeah. to, to, you know, to to stay, you know, and say top two, you know, close to or getting home field advantage throughout. Uh, well, what they say is good them. teams find ways to win. And, well, yep. obviously it wasn't going at 100% for them yesterday, and they found a way to win. Just like Toronto beating Halifax where it was weird. I call those character wins. Those are wins – Teams that win big find ways to win. And teams like Toronto, teams like um, San Diego, they're finding ways to win no matter what, most of the time. Like nobody expects anybody to go 18 and 0. So, you know, come playoff time, I do expect teams to go, you know, 5 and 1 on a way to go, or 4 and 1, whatever it takes to yeah. win it. True. So, you know, come push, come to shove. It's health and character. Those are the two things that uh, are big. And cohesiveness, obviously, but uh, you won't have the uh, the character part if you don't have the cohesiveness. That's what I'm looking for in a team that's going to win. And ironically, all the teams that are up in the top, they have that. And the ones who don't have that are starting to fall by the wayside or are inconsistent, as you like to say, Sean. Yeah. And they're looking to find that consistency, which is finding those veteran or those character guys, the ones that will knock the other guys into shape, you know, or when you don't have to convince, you know, or buy in. What I'm impressed about is the Vancouver team right now. 
And we saw it from the beginning. We've, we've actually watched this build from the ground up. We watched this disheveled mess at the beginning to this team that played Philadelphia this weekend, which is by no means that team that we saw in the first couple of weeks. Yeah, you're seeing that culture shift, especially now with most behind That's the bench. Right. You can see the change now that they, they have a belief that they can win in game in, game out. Well, this is Malowski's way from the beginning of bringing in his guys so that he knows where it's all going and how to build. And all the guys who know what he expects and how he expects it and the slow build. It's not going to happen overnight. But the crowds are getting bigger. The team's getting stronger. It's a good time to be in Vancouver. You know, the future is very bright. And they're young. And kind of go back to that point with San Diego, maybe that's part of it too, is there's a lot of veterans, a lot to the point where I think we've brought it up before, there's too many cooks in the kitchen. Well, there is only one ball, right? Yeah. You know, that's uh, like the Dutch soccer team. You know, there are all these stars on that, but there was only one ball and everybody wanted to be the star. So nobody bothered to play with anybody. I don't think that's the problem in San Diego. I think they play very well. But I also think that in game 16 or whatever it is, 15, um, when you're not the youngest team in the league and you're doing a heck of a lot of traveling because they have a lot of guys from here in Ontario and you're doing a lot of traveling all year long, by this point in the season, all of this is catching up. All the games, all the miles, all the jet lag, all the other things, as well as injuries. Because all these have been tough games because of the parity in the league. So these are other things. I know that they traded for Wardell because they wanted to give guys like Dixon and guys like Stotts a little bit of a break here and there before the playoffs because they're banged up. Wardell had one assist. So yeah. just putting that out there is that I, I don't think that that was the answer. I think they would have rather had something a little bit more high powered, but at what expense? Right. And other teams know it. So of course, you know, the cost of living may be here, but for you, it's here. So, you know, let's see. Because um, notorious first round exits, right? Shockers. Yep. But is it when you have an older team? I watch it in Toronto when they had much older teams. And by the time playoffs run, yeah, they were they had a great season. But they're out of gas. Well, it's a good segue. Uh, being out of gas brings us over to uh, today's <laughs> Saskatchewan game, in which uh, the Saskatchewan Rush, who looked very good in the first half, very good in the first half. Met the uh, Georgia Swarm. And 9 7 was your full time score for the Swarm. But uh, this really was a tale of two halves. Let's uh, sit back and enjoy. This morning, the equipment guys came straight to the arena to take care of that. They're the rear heroes. Well, I suppose it is for the Georgia Swarm. There it is, the seal breaker, Robert Church. Church went for four and two last night on Long Island on a double team. Now Zach Manns. Manns been active here early. Oh, right down in front. Gets past Dobson and his left shoulder into the back of the net. Patrick Dodds, his not advantage. Rush on the power play. Already up 2 0. It's a big moment here early. Now the last two games here at Gas South, we've seen teams up 3 0. Quick shot on Dobson, back of the net. Believe that's Church. To perfection to this point. They've not played poorly, no, I don't think, no. Georgia. It's just that they've just been barely outplayed. Another goaltender. Yeah. Snake bit. Another one through Dobson. Church has got the hat trick at 8.08 of the second quarter. Great pick, get it back and score. Bob Mary passed it off to Thompson. Q had to check to see if he still had it. 
Jackson Thompson. Lyle has it! Oh my! Of the ball game. They've had one since. Great look. Church rips it into the back of the net. Saskatchewan has doubled their lead once again to 6 3. You know These fans starving from a for a little electricity inside the building. Thompson! Score! And that will bring the rest of the fans to for the final four and a half minutes, or at least for now. It's been a chippy ball game between the two clubs. Four penalties on each team. Thompson score! With 180 seconds remaining in the ball game, Georgia has two overtime wins so far this year. Kill! Captain Clutch does it again! Unbelievable, this guy! Well, I just um, pull up my uh, my pickums and uh, my reasoning for why I picked Georgia. Two tough games this weekend. A pissed off swarm team. Lyle Thompson. All good reasons. All came to fruition. <clears throat> that fourth quarter. Was but yeah, I was gonna say, but not till there were five minutes left in the fourth well, quarter. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you know, once they ran out of gas. That's the thing. I'm going to go. On the, I'm going to go on the rant right now because this is ridiculous. Like to have a team play Saturday night into a Sunday afternoon game, that's ridiculous. How do you expect a team to do that? I know other there's been other Sunday afternoon games, but usually they have a Friday night game and have the day to travel. That's yeah, they got uh, they got no sleep whatsoever. They, they got, got hosed. Yeah, they're lucky. Um, they they went with absolutely no fuel in the tank. And when you have your choice of, they mentioned on the, on the broadcast of whether you're going to eat or sleep, it's a tough choice for an athlete. Yeah. You know, whether you fuel or whether you rest is uh, really, and uh, it's insane. According to Adam Levi's article, the rush asked that game to be pushed back. So that they could have at least some type of break. And Leek said, no, can't do it. It was funny because Lyle Thompson said in the interview after the game is that the coaches took a strip out of that team at halftime for being down for nothing to a team that played 12 hours ago. This is a playoff. Every game is a playoff game for Georgia right now, if they want to make the playoffs. So that's yeah. a team that if they do make the playoffs will be dangerous because they've been playing playoff games for a month previous. Yeah. But, you know, they have to. And if they're playing, you know, this disheveled to a team that played yesterday, now what happens when they play a fresh team? Yeah, no, I think that's a good point. Like, uh, I think in some ways it went the way he thought. The rush kind of came out quick is because they still had some legs on them from the night before and still were kind of in game mode. But after right, 40, 50 half, minutes. Once they rest, they're done. Yeah. You know, if they could have gone without a halftime and didn't have to sit down, they might have actually got a little bit more juice out of them. And then they'd be completely fried by the end of it. But uh, let's see how quickly they can bounce back. For next week, because yeah. they keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Thursday. Yeah, I know it's a terrible schedule. I just, that just really bugs me. That. Oh well, yeah, now you got a Thursday game. schedule like that. Ridiculous to have a Friday, Saturday night into Sunday afternoon. It's just. And the team is vying for the playoffs, and you're going to give them this schedule. This is yeah. Uh, like this the is good is for they their... don't make the playoffs. Why they didn't make the playoffs? Yeah, and then uh, the. Uh... What week? The week nineteen. I mean, it's home and home with Calgary, and that's on consecutive days. Yeah, so, I mean that's not as bad. Of travel at least that one's right close, right? And it's yeah. both teams are traveling. They're both at the same disadvantage, right? Sure. Whereas Rush are tired, and Georgia had fresh legs. That's right. I had to go on the rant because I don't. I don't want to make excuses, but it's just. Well, you know, enough's enough. That's silly. We've been talking about this for it weeks is. and weeks. That this is yeah. silly. But, uh, yeah, the five games. Like I said, I know there's been other Sunday afternoon games, but at least they've given travel days. Like, it's usually been a sad Friday night and a Saturday a Sunday afternoon. Now, you see, I don't understand 
well, unless unless Wells Fargo isn't available on Sunday afternoon. Why this couldn't be a Sunday afternoon game instead of a Thursday evening game and give them a week rest. Because they already rushed for four games, right? Or the rush Philadelphia Friday or this Saturday. Saturday. Philadelphia plays Saturday at 1. So, you know. Yeah, that game is yeah. Thursday, Sean. Yeah, it is so. Thursday. I was just thinking, uh, I keep forgetting the rush. They just have the one game. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a Thursday night. Yeah, game. Think of the, yeah Philadelphia so I plays it Saturday and Sunday. Philadelphia yeah. plays Thursday and Philadelphia plays Saturday, so they get a day's rest. So it's, it's um, like I said, I, I have no issue with that Thursday game in some ways because it is what it is because uh, it was a canceled game. But you could have avoided a Saturday night, Sunday afternoon. Like you can't tell me you couldn't avoid that in your scheduling. Right. Yeah. Well, we got a later week next week. Um, Watch two thirds of the league are on par. We're going eight and nine. We could use a rest too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's only fitting that the ALL semifinals and finals are next weekend, so I can get I can get just as many articles out of myself, right? <laughs> but uh, we have Thursday, of course, Saskatchewan in Philly. Uh, let's hope that the Philly crowd comes out in droves, because they certainly didn't come out yesterday. A lot of empty seats there. Uh, spring break. Maybe they all went up. Never mind. <laughs> um, Saturday, Buffalo plays Philadelphia, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So on the West Coast, you can have your uh, your bacon and eggs and watch uh, little uh, Bandits Wings Lacrosse. That night, you have uh, Halifax in Rochester for a uh, shindig over at the Blue Cross Arena, 7 p.m. And on later that same night, you got Vancouver and Vegas locking up in Vegas for a 10 p.m. Eastern game. And that's it. Four games this week. Thoughts, guys? Other than <sighs> Yeah. Yeah, I mean I mean because this I mean, is the stretch till the uh yeah. The I mean, I, that that Sask Philly game, I think it, it's 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 pretty much for both. Yeah, it's pretty much both of their seasons on the line, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. You know, because you know, Philly, you lose that game. You're coming back two days, two days later against the Buffalo team, who's going to be pissed off. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it, it. I believe it's their final home game. I mean, they're one and six at home. So, uh, you know, they, they dropped those two and now you're looking at five and 10. So, um, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, and if, Sask if Saskatchewan loses, you know, they dropped to, what is it? Five and nine, five and eight. And then, you know, they're going to have the home and home with Calgary who, you know, Unfortunately for Calgary, <laughs> this is the worst possible timing for them to, to go on a buy, you know, when they're starting to, to pick up their game. But they're going to have that rest where Saskatchewan isn't with the five games in 15 days. And, you know, Saskatchewan loses and then, say, drops both ends of that doubleheader. That, that's it for them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because we have four games this week and nine the following week, right? Yeah, yeah, a little crazy. A little. Um, the only the only other thing I guess I would add is um, it's kind of Vancouver season on the line too. You know, yeah. they 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 need to pretty much win out, win out. To, to have a chance. That's yeah. probably another one because Las Vegas probably could use that win too, just to kind of mathematically keep themselves. Funny though, because uh, oh, Vancouver has Vegas uh, has Halifax the week after that, and uh, now with that loss from Halifax. Uh, they're going to need to get themselves in gear too. They play yeah. Rochester uh, this week, and then uh, then they have the Vancouver. That's it's not going to be easy. No. no, but I think Mike made a good point in our kind of chat during this week. It's kind of funny we're in week eighteen, and technically nobody's out of it. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, which is wild. So yeah. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I, I'd say the unified standings are, you know, an overwhelming success. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, you kind of hope that, uh, you know, a team like Vegas 
Just for optics, you know, eight, eight and ten shouldn't make the playoffs. It shouldn't, and I still don't think it will. Even though, uh, you know, th those teams kind of bunched in from say six through twelve, even. <laughs> but these eight and ten could get you the tiebreaker for that last playoff spot. That's true. That's true. That's very possible. So maybe eight and ten will get you in there, but then it could be other statistics that'll get yeah, you some out. of the other uh, formula that uh, in there that uh, will knock it out. Well, that remains to be seen, guys. And uh, you know, like I say, it's interesting because uh, for the first time in as long as I can remember, um, everybody is still is still a, a dogfight everywhere. Every game means something somewhere down the line for some form, and even if teams don't figure that they're in the plans. They are big time spoilers, big time spoilers. Well, I was going to make one quick point. Nice thing too is you see it in a lot of other leagues where team knows they're out, they'll just start tanking because they know they can get that number one tip pick. You can't really do this here. Well, it's also that you're you number still one have pick a chance. somewhere else. So yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's true too. That. But at the same extent, you're still not out of it, so you don't want to tank it either. It's very true. It's very true, and everything everything is all possibilities are still open. They may not be probable, but they are possible, and uh, we've seen crazier things happen. Yeah. So, yeah. I just want to remind everybody that we are on Facebook, we are on Twitter, we are on X, we are on Thread, we are on YouTube, we're all over the place. Um, we are on Edge of Philly Sports at www.eopsports.com slash lacrosse. Uh, please head over to our YouTube page and subscribe. We have lots of things over there, uh, retro games. Um, our library is over there, as well as interviews, press conferences, fights, and all kinds of other things. More stuff coming all the time. And there's going to be more retro games coming in the very, very near future. So stick around for that as well. Um, with our Facebook page, come back, check us out three, four, five times a day. We always have our thumb on the pulse of the situation. And we are up to date with everything going on with NLL, with PLL about to start up, MSL, WLA all about to start up, OJLL, Senior B. I um, had a talk with the commissioner there, and we're going to be doing uh, recaps on all the games there as well. So it's going to be uh, a completely informative site for anybody and everybody to get all their information from your one-stop shop, if you will. Any last words? I'll go with Mike first. I was just, uh, <laughs> I think, glad that we're we're coming into a short week. We could take a, a little bit of a breather, but uh, but the games are no less important. So, absolutely, Sean. Any last words? Yeah, same thing. Especially being out in here in Saskatchewan, uh, we're sitting on pins and needles. Absolutely. Well, the Rock have a bye week next week, but the week after that, I will be in Albany with them. So that should be an interesting time. I haven't been to the MVP arena. I'm looking forward to having a gander at that. And there's a few people down there, lacrosse people that I uh, have meetings set up with as well. So it should be an interesting time. We also uh, don't want to uh, neglect uh, KUFLA, the uh, Canadian University Field Lacrosse Association. And uh, I have a good relationship with the uh, new commissioner and assistant commissioner, and we're going to be doing a number of things with them as well uh, for you on this uh, northern side of the border as well. So stick around with us, and we're going to have all kinds of stuff for you. Should be a very, very interesting and exciting spring slash summer and fall. It's going to be a lot of fun things going on, and it's going to be a busy time for all of us. So for Sean Slatover and Moose Jaw, for Muffler Mike over in Connecticut, I'm Gary Groove in Toronto, wishing you the best of weeks, and hopefully everything works out well for your team as well as mine. <laughs> until then, until next week, we are here next week at 9 o'clock Sunday evening Eastern. Until then, have a great week, and we'll see you then. <laughs>